Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Yeah. So this is fine. So thanks for doing this. I really appreciate your time. Of course. We have um, Helen Yi, a uh, sports reporter. Um, and then you have um, your own thing going called Eyes on the Game. Yes. Okay. First of all, I just wanted to, you know, get some, uh, some just background history. Like, where are you originally from? Born and raised here in Las Vegas, but my parents are, my dad's from China and my mom's from Taiwan. So I'm Chinese, but born and raised in Las Vegas. Oh, that's what's up. Um, were there a lot of Asians at your high school? <laughs> you know what? Um, yeah, there was, but I, I kind of floated around because I was an athlete when I was younger. So I would float between like the athletes, you know, the agent, you know, everyone was in cliques in high school. Oh yeah. I was, I wrestled in high school. Oh, nice. Yeah. At a really, um, pretty, like a strong curriculum. We're, we're known for our high school wrestling. Oh, that that's awesome. In California. Yeah. yeah and you swam. Yes, I swam, but um, what's crazy, because you asked me if there were a lot of Asians, there were a lot of Asians, like, with my name, but it, it would be, like, the last name is Lee, I mean, I'm a, Lee. yeah, I'm a Lee, <laughs> I'm a Yi, yeah, I know, I know, it rhymes, yeah, yeah, Yi yeah. e and Lee's, um, yeah. so were there, um, in my high school, it was predominantly, because, you know, it was, like, um, you know, mostly, I think, Caucasian, there were there was a pocket of Asians, but it was mostly like a white high school. You know, yeah, but it's like they kind of all hung out with each other. So oh, yeah, and then everyone we would have um like the pens that were like pandas or you know Sailor Moon and stuff like that. So everyone oh yeah yeah no doubt felt like there were a lot you know yeah yeah and then so how did you actually get into swimming? Well, I know. I mean, I, I know I may not look like a swimmer anymore, but uh, when I was five years old, my parents, I would get sick, like very easily, weak immune system. So my parents were like, you know, let's get you into sports, get, you know, you stronger and healthier. And then little did they know, my sister and I, she's two and a half years older than me. Um, we became pretty good at it. Um, and then I became a nationally ranked uh, age group swimmer when Whoa. I was there. Yeah, my former, like, teammates and stuff, um, and even people I've raced against, they're Olympians now. Whoa, uh, did you go to, did you get a scholarship to, to colleges? You know what, I, I did. I've gotten scholarship uh, letters back then when they used to mail you letters ever since I was in like middle school, like eighth or ninth grade. Yeah, I got one from Cornell. Yeah. Yeah, me too. You got one from Cornell? <laughs> I got one from wrestling, for wrestling. Oh my God. But I was I, 100 pounds and I choked at the state tournament. <laughs> no way. I was ranked second in California. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I, ch I choked. <laughs> hey, it, it's all good. We all choke at something, right? So. I always choke at the state tournament, though. Oh, I won San Diego County. I always choked at state. Always. But w what's important is that you learn from it, right? I turned to drugs and alcohol. <laughs> and a pretty cool, like, studio setup, so. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. You know what? I think everything is meant to happen for a reason. Because I, I was, like, in Arizona, I... I could have died. Like I was starving out there. I would literally, I went to ASU, Arizona state. Okay, and I had the shittiest like meal plan card. Uh -huh. so I would have to sneak in the cafeteria. Like I would steal bananas. Oh yeah. I was starving. Oh, speaking of starving, there were days when I first started uh, sports reporting and yeah. I was struggling. I was like working, you know, my, full-time job and trying to do this but then when I quit my full-time job I was struggling so bad that for food I was like you know what you know in Walmart they have like the big brand the great value saltine crackers oh yeah and, all day yeah and I don't know what I was thinking but I was like okay this can last me a week you know because it comes with like all those uh yeah. yeah yeah so you would just eat those straight yeah I know oh, I, I have soup or nothing no, I, I like them raw, you know. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, so we we have that uh, in common. Uh, and you know that that kind of builds character, don't you think? Though, like, knowing both sides of the track. Yes, and sleeping in your car. Oh, you I, did that. Oh my God, I was so scared because I was in California trying to do an interview. Yeah. And by that time, it was like I, you know, I couldn't afford a hotel. All my friends, I already asked to sleep on their couch like ten times already. So I'm like, I can't you know, continue to sleep on people's couches or floors. So yeah, I remember parking, like, you know, just trying to, cause California finding parking is hard enough. Oh, tickets galore. Yeah. So I'm like, where can I park within? I don't want people to think like, you know, I'm not okay. You know, my car. Like, uh, oh, and then yeah, there's, so there's, just sketchy, like, there's sketchy heads out there too, as far as break-ins or yeah, I was really Editorial behavior and all that. Yeah, I see. You know what I'm talking about. You've done this too. I didn't live in my car, but like I lived in a really shitty apartment um, in Arizona, and uh, I, I worked at. Do you know what Circle K is? Yes, they have one here. Yeah, it's like a Seven Eleven. Yeah. So I worked the graveyard shift at Circle K, and it was sketchy. Like. You know, cats would like come in and steal a beer. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant cats. Oh no, no That's people, true. people. I mean, no, <laughs> not actual cats. No, not 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 people. Like, no, no, no. Yeah. Um, people, sketchy individuals would go steal stuff. But I would steal stuff as well because I was, you know, I would steal like the frozen pizzas and hot dogs just to survive. And then you heat the pizza up, though, right? No, no. So what happened was, I'm sober now. I wasn't sober back then. Good, I'm proud of you. Drinking and smoking weed and doing drugs and everything. I'm sober like over 10 years now, but That's back true. then, like I would do little deals. Oh, like, oh. like drop a little, like a, a, like a little nugget of weed and then I would look the other way and oh. I would let them take some beer. Oh. <laughs> and so there was a policy there too when like if like a six pack of Budweiser, if you drop one, you would have to put it in the back stock room. So I would bring my backpack in there and then, cause it would be like a five pack, but then I would take those in my backpack. Got it. Wow. Very, um, that's good to know. It's like, <laughs> I, I, would, I would see in movies, you know, like, oh, um, this, this is how you do if you want drugs or whatever. Good yeah, well, I'm sober now. <laughs> I probably owe them an amends. Uh, this was uh, like, you know, a long time ago. But um, another time I was rolling a joint in the freezer, the, the you know, the free, uh, whatever, the cooler. Yeah. Because it was like three, four in the morning. And my boss caught me red handed. And guess what, what he did? What? He grabbed the, he grabbed the joint and he, he smoked it with me. And he goes, ah, uh, make sure that you stock aisle, you know, that the first aisle, you, you know, and then he left. That's a cool boss. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. I, I would have yeah, worked was, for life. Yeah. I ended up getting fired. I got fired from a lot of jobs. Did you work regular? Like, did you work in like any regular job, like restaurant or? Yeah. I've, I mean, I've had numerous, I, my first job ever when I was 15 and a half, I was a lifeguard and then. That's a yeah. cool job. Well, the only thing I knew how to do was swim. So, you Yeah. Know. So I lifeguarded, then I lifeguarded at a casino on the Strip, at a hotel casino. What was it like working in the Ve on the Vegas Strip? Was it, is there, there, there's a lot of schemes going on, right? Like, uh, yeah, you know. Hustles, it, a lot of hustles, right? Oh, yeah. The, I, I could go on for hours, you know, but I, I don't know if I went on this. I'm just curious. Tell me one or two. I mean, well, what kind of like hustling you know like to get money i'm sure there's you know there's like um you know valet cats who like you know what i mean they could oh yeah yeah they you know what I mean? you gotta, yeah call their friend oh you you oh need yeah to this. oh i i got your back yeah, yeah. I got, yeah. Oh, a lot of that stuff the undercover even i also worked front desk on the strip and like I was a front desk agent and they would slip you, you know, like $20 bills, $50 bills, then you upgrade them to suite or you comp them to buffets. Yeah, there's like little tricks. Yeah, um, have you seen the movie Casino? You're gonna hate me, no. 
Okay, but you, that, you, go, go, go watch it. It's a, it's a great, uh, it's a great uh, movie with uh, Robert De Niro and Joe Pesci, but they, they, it's kind of glamorized, but it's like really interesting because it's all about Vegas. So it's like that too. Yeah, there, there's a more high end like schemes and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like on like a higher scale where they, you know, they, they like kind of like they trick these Japanese businessmen of uh, staying longer and gambling more to take their money, like that type of stuff. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's yeah. totally that stuff too. Yeah. yeah. So, so you worked um, a couple in a couple casinos. Did you, have you worked in the restaurant business as well? I have. So I've served food as well. And I, I even, yeah. you, <laughs> nice. Did you like it? You got to eat Hated all the food back. Hated okay. it. I was fired from every food job. Oh, damn. Why? You ate all the I'm food? just bad in the food business. Okay. I hop. P.F. Chang's, Tempe Improv, you, you name it. I've been there. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I've done that. I've even done um, beverage serving, cocktail server. I've done that on the pool, in the strip, like on the strip, sorry, not in the strip. Never oh, done right. strip club stuff. Uh, yeah, on the pool, in the hotel, uh, nightclub. Um, that was, you know, when I turned 21, just because everyone said – you know, oh, when you turn 21 and you live in Vegas and I was born and raised there and- You gotta go there to get the money? Yeah, yeah. well, I wanted Stop. to try it out to see like, what are people talking about, right? Right. And, and so I've done that, but I've done like hotel stuff. I've done insurance stuff. Mm. I, yeah, I've done like a lot of jobs. Yeah. So my next question, how did you transition from that life to where you're at now, because that's a drastic change, wouldn't you say? I mean, because you're on TV, you're interviewing like Diego Sanchez and UFC fighter. Like, when did that happen? Well, when I was 22, and this is pretty weird, but it relates back to when I was a swimmer for 10 years, like my whole childhood. All I knew how to do was eat, sleep, and swim. So um, I was very shy, though. And I hated being shy and I could not talk to people. Like I would really? pray. Yeah. I would pray and wish I would be invisible in class that my teacher, other students can't see me. Yeah. Like that's how afraid I was. How'd you get and over that? Well, so then because I hated myself and the only thing that made me feel comfortable was swimming was, you know, doing the sport. Doing yeah. Something. So I always loved sports and growing up, you know, I watched like NBA, NFL, MLB, like everything, you know, with my dad, my younger brother. Even oh, you say NBA? Oh, hell yeah. I just interviewed Terrence Ross from awesome. the Orlando Magic. How is that? That's the homie. Nice. I, I met him playing Warzone. Where? Uh, vi playing video games. Oh, oh, oh my yeah well he he was a fan of the podcast but then he hollered at me and now like like we talk on instagram that's you know what's crazy one of um someone that lives near me he plays video games with stephen wonderboy thompson yeah you know who else um uh max holloway yeah he he actually streams warzone did you know that I, I think I do, Max Holloway. Yeah, he's into, the, he's into gaming, yeah. Oh, damn. Isn't that a trip? You good gamer or no? No, I'm hor I'm a horrible. No, no, I just play for fun. No, I'm bad. Okay. I like playing, though. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I play Mortal Kombat. Need yeah, yeah, I remember all that. Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat. Yeah, I remember all that. The arcades. Yeah, and then you try to dress up as them for Halloween. Oh, yeah, Blanca or, or Ryu. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <Kung> oh, <laughs> for real, yeah. Chun-Li, all that. Yeah. Uh, so, so you, so sports actually helped your anxiety, your social anxiety. Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, but when I was 22, you know, and I'm like cocktail waitressing, trying whatever, um, I, yeah, I hated being so shy. I couldn't even order fast food, like, at a drive-thru. I, I hated speaking. My teachers would yell at me for mumbling. I just, it was kind of like a big phobia of mine and, like, one of my biggest fears in life. So I was like, you know what? I, I hate myself for this. Um, so this 
podcast or not podcast because that's like the era now but back then it was like radio stuff so internet radio show they asked me to be one of their co-hosts with these two other women and I was like you know what I don't want to talk about fashion or anything or entertainment I want to talk about sports because that's what I love and then they're like okay so um you know you could try it out so then I tried it and the producer was like wow you suck and I was like oh, oh that's what he said yeah well oh. he didn't feel like you suck but he was like Helen you know you're not that good at this you know and yeah <laughs> and uh, then he was a little discouraging I thought you'd tell me the opposite, but no. continue. Oh, yeah, that's, that's kind of weird. That they, but why would, but then I think from my competitive nature, um, I was like, oh, okay, he wants to say I'm not good at this. Let me purposely do this because I want to be good. So then I created my own sports radio show, Eyes on the Game. Eyes and on the Game. You're the founder. Yes, the founder. Mm -hmm. um, and... From there, you know, I started with another co-host because I wanted, you know, someone to bounce like... Another female? Yeah. No, uh, actually a male. Oh, mother, uh, can we give him a shout out real quick? Oh, to the guy? Yeah, yeah, well, what's his name? He, he quit on me. His okay, name, well, we won't well, shout him out then. Okay. Because <laughs> he, he thought I sucked too. He's like, Helen, you're crazy. You think you could do this like forever? And yeah, it's, it's a long story. Well, now... Yeah, I mean, it was after sleeping in my car, all you know, all that roller coaster. Yeah, thankfully, but yeah. So I created my show, and then um, I did that. But then I was working, you know, full time, all my like jobs and stuff. And uh, I think so. From there, 2015, and got picked up. So went from internet radio to AM radio to NBC Sports. And then in 2016, in May, Floyd Mayweather Sr. told me that his son would be coming out to, you know, coming out of retirement to fight an MMA fighter. I said, is yeah, that, that was Connor McGregor? Yeah. I saw that fight. Yeah, I was that there. That was one of the biggest fights ever. I know. It was so historic. And um, from there, like my interviews were picked up from TMZ, you know, Fox Sports, ESPN, and it, it really, I credit that to my line. Thank you, Floyd Mayweather Sr. So that's yeah. the start. That's what kind of like, it, it bubbled after that. Like, oh yeah, everything was like domino after that. Then, you know, I got like hired with, you know, like the radio station full time. I've done stuff. NBC and Fox, Fox, Fox and ESPN. as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. That's incredible. Thank you. I mean, but so, so like, what do your folks think of like your, where, I mean, they must be proud of how far you've come. That's yeah. crazy. Well, I thought, you know, when I was younger, I thought I would be an Olympian too. Like that was my dream. And like I said, you know, and even like winning state as a junior, like I thought, you know, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to be an athlete for the rest of my life or athlete, then become a coach. Um, so then, you know, when, uh, I don't want to blame anybody, but just when that was not possible anymore out of my control, um, I, you know, lost my identity, didn't know who I was. And then I, you know, did all those jobs, bleached my hair blonde, just, you know, didn't know what to do. Um, so then when I started the sports stuff, my dad, you know, they were very hesitant at first thinking like the hell, like, you know, we, we know no one in this business. We, you know, like we're not even from America. Like it's going to be very hard to. Yeah, and your Asian parents, they get shook easy and they want either you to be a doctor or a lawyer or some yes. shit like that. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, it was like, they were so shook. It was like an earthquake, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so th there was some times when I had to distance myself a little bit just because I needed to be around, you know. Supportive lots. people. Yes, but I will say things come full circle, and my parents and I were best friends today, and oh, they're yeah. very supportive, yeah. You so know, I think about Asians, I don't want to stereotype or generalize, but for the most part, my experience is 
Asian parents, as far as, you know, careers or, you know, occupations that we choose, they only start paying attention once uh, they see, see some money. You, you hit the nail on the head. Yeah, that's what they respect. Because you, you think, you know, they're from different countries, and that's the only thing that resonates. And they don't, see, they don't respect, like, you climbing up the mountain. They only like it when they're like, oh, you know, they're at the top now, and I can see them with money. You know what I mean? That's true. Yeah, with Hongba. Like the red envelopes, you know? Oh, yeah. Explain that to the viewers again, because that, that, I don't think a lot of people, like, well, what is that? For Chinese New Year, um, they, like your elders, if you're single, I mean, you can be in a relationship. And this is, like, from my understanding, because once you're married, then you don't get it anymore. But um, they, the older generations give it to like their nephews, nieces and stuff. And they That's like a red envelope, right? With money, yeah. With money. Yeah. I, I never got the most. Some of my like friends when I was in high school, they would get like thousands of dollars. I'm like, what the hell I got what? some in the envelope? In the envelopes. How much did you get? <laughs> Couple hundred. Couple of that, you know, I was like yeah. oh, another one dollar, one dollar. Yeah. So what's the purpose? Yeah, what's the purpose of that? Is that just out of respect, or is that is that a custom in Chinese uh, custom? Because yeah. I'm Korean, I never got that. Oh, you guys don't have those. Koreans don't do that. I mean, they'll give you like like you know they'll give you a hundi, but they don't have like they give like you an envelope. So they just give it to you just because. It's like my uncles or whatever, they'll be like, "Here's a twenty, or here, go get some candy at Seven Eleven." You know what I mean? That type of thing. Uh. That's freaking cool. Yeah, but they. I, what's cooler is getting an envelope filled with thousand dollar bills. That's what's cool. Well, I didn't get that. Yeah. I'm like shit. I need that. So <laughs> when you're when you're at that level, would you have to do that to your your kids or your family members? You're gonna have yeah. to do that to them. Yeah. It's custom. Yes. And what's the name of that that tradition again? Oh, it's um for Chinese New Year. Yeah, but what's it called? You had it. Hong bao. That means red envelope. Say it again. Hong bao. Oh, hong bao. Yeah, close. Okay. Hong bao. Yeah. So next time I get a Chinese guest on here, I'll be like, bring the hong bao. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, bring it. You know, my platform, <laughs> I only accept the hong bao. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Cash. I would never do that. Dollar bills only. I would never do that. Um. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm ecstatic because this is historical for my platform because, you know, I had Terrence Ross, but I really haven't had a lot of sports people on my, my podcast. Oh. Yeah, so you're one of the first, actually, yeah. Cool. I've had skateboarders, DJs, rappers, musicians, comedians, but artists, but, n like, you're actually just top because, yeah. Terrence was the first. I think you're like top three. Yeah, you're the second one. Oh, I, I feel honored. Thanks for doing it. Um, so, and I'm also really hyped because I've been following Ultimate Fighting or even before Ult UFC, I was watching Pride. Pride Fighting? Yes. Do you know nice. what? Uh, one of the OGs. Do you remember that? Of course I do. Yes. And yeah, so WEC, Strike Force. Yeah. 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 So, okay, so uh, this is great because I want to transition into um, into mixed martial arts. Who yeah. are some of the coolest cats you've interviewed? You know what? I will say this just because when my show, when I had a co-host, you know, when I first started Eyes on the Game, um, I will tell you, and I know right now he may be uh, – I don't know how people may feel about, you know, politics or whatever, but – I don't talk publicly about politics and I never will, but Me neither. I will a good story about Tito Ortiz and why I say this is because back in 2014, when I first got my show, you know, starting off and talking on the mic for like one minute felt like seven hours, you know, it, it, you're like, Oh my God, you're sweating and everything. And I had my co-host at the time and I asked Tito if he could come on my show because, you know, obviously I've watched a lot of his fights, you know, throughout oh, the Chuck year. Chuck Liddell, classics. Oh, hell yeah. Classic. So 
So I was like, oh my gosh, you know, Tito's one of my first ever guests of me doing radio. And I was like, I don't know how, how this stuff works. Like I'm kind of winging it. Right. So then, um, he calls in and everything's good. And then the call gets lost, like it drops. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm like sweating. Like, oh my God, I'm embarrassed. Like I've never done this before. How, like, what do I do? And then he calls back, apologizes and was like, just so generous with his time and stuff. And uh, just very kind. And I will never forget that because that's when I first started and I was so nervous out of my mind, like sweating bullets. So yeah. that's my Tito story. That's why I would, I'll always be grateful. I have a Tito story too. Yeah. So I was in Vegas with my brother. He was doing shows. It was for some UFC kind of event or something. And um, it was some press conference or something. And I was sitting I was sitting in a row and I was, I think I was sitting in his seat, but he, he like was sitting right next to me. Okay. And I just remember like sweating and like nervous. I couldn't even look that way. And he took up half my seat because he, you know, he's got a big build. And so I was like literally just on the edge. I was on the edge of my seat, just sweating. Oh, wow. Well, did you talk to him? You say nothing. Wow. So he took half my seat. Oh. <laughs> He's a, it's like a seat warmer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice um, sure seats, yeah. Yeah, it's okay, you know. He's a legend. Um, I respect I respect all the OGs in the, in the yes. game. Oh, so Tito, uh, another one, Tony Ferguson. Fan. Fred, I'm a fan uh, of his. Huh? I'm a fan. Oh, yeah. I freaking love Tony. He's yeah. so awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, so interviewing him, yeah, that was, when did I first interview him? In my early days when I first started my on-camera stuff. Yeah. Through radio, then transition on camera. Tony, super nice. And shout out to his wife, Christina. She's so nice, too. So they're really polite, huh? Such nice people. You oh, think they'd be the opposite because they fight for a living, you know what I mean? Yeah, but honestly, like 99.9% .9 of them have, are such great people to Anderson Silva when I interviewed. Oh, you interviewed Anderson Silva? Yeah. How was he? Amazing. So freaking nice. So funny. Even like Yoel Romero, you would think like. I mean, that guy looks like, a, he looks like a monster. I, yeah, but. He is buff. Yeah, he's funny. He, oh, Yoel tried to teach me how to salsa dance. I can't what? do it. What? Yeah. Oh, so they're sweeties. They're sweetie pies. <laughs> Super sweet, yeah. Oh, they're sweet people. Yes, very nice. That blows nice. my mind because my, my whole idea about all of these fighters are like, these guys are just rough around the edges and just, because I see some of the, you know, like, the interviews and the, you know how they talk shit back and forth to the other fighter. Yeah. But that's just for show, huh? Um, no, or, you know, that could or could not be, I think it depends. It's psychological. But, oh, it's, it's a mind games. Yeah. But I mean, at least like to reporters or in my experiences, cause I can only speak for my own experiences. Yeah. It's been nothing but like just super polite, friendly that's generous. so refreshing to hear that's awesome now like other females and males in your field are they is there rivalry between you guys or is everyone cool with each other no i mean at least to me everyone's been cool with me mm -hmm. and vice versa you know i'm pretty laid back i just i go there and want to just do my job work hard yeah you know keep to myself and yeah is, yeah is ariel ariel hawani is he cool I don't see him around as much anymore. Yeah, but I, but he's one of the biggest ones, right? Because I always see cats on, uh, I mean, people on his um, his platform. Cats equals people. Okay, now, yeah. now I know. Yeah. I, I wrote that down. Okay, uh, yeah. I think I'm the only one that says that. I'm sorry, I'll start saying people. Oh, no, yeah. no, no. I, I like that word, okay. cat. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, I mean, look, uh, he's been nice to me. Okay. Yeah. So. Because uh, I noticed okay. with him, I'm sure he's cool with other reporters or whatnot, but 
like I know Dana White's had problems with him and he's had problems with other fighters, you know, like yeah, you know what interview with the Diaz brothers or like Nick yeah. or one of them. Well, I think when I started uh, covering the sport and coming on the scene more, I think that's when Ariel was starting to, that was like towards his end. Cause I feel like he's never at events at least during this pandemic, you know, like we were in fight Island, he wasn't there and stuff. And so I haven't seen him around as much anymore. Um, but I do remember, yeah, when he got banned and stuff. Yeah. Um, now, um, what my, one of my all time favorite fighters are the Diaz brothers. Have yeah. you interviewed them? No, I, I have not. But when I turned 25, who was it? Because I'll, I posted this photo because when I turned 25, I think I had a mutual friend and they were partying with Nick Diaz. So then we like, you know, it was at one of the nightclubs in Vegas. So we all just hung out for a little bit. Like, no, just, you know, at the club because we had the mutual friends. Yeah. And I think who, but he was super nice too. He was super nice? Yeah. So both of them, Nate and Nick? Uh, Nate... From what I've seen, he's been nice, but I have not interviewed them yet. I really want to, though. Oh, you got to. That's got to be on your bucket list. They're probably sure. one of the only ones I haven't really interviewed because I've interviewed, you know, from Habib to John Jones, Stipe, DC. You know, like, I, I'm grateful I've been able to interview a lot. But, yeah, Nick and Nate Diaz, I have not yet. They're That's all my bucket list. They're like, they're, in, they're interesting people too like you know you could tell they're like they kind of do their own thing as well yeah and they keep it real just like oh, when i yeah went to diego sanchez he said he respects that like they stay I true saw that on your instagram i respect um you know that made made sense to me because i've always thought of uh diego in that you know he's always been real like that too he is and one of the ogs right the oh yeah player. even like even before he fought uh, bj penn um, you know, like when he was like, yes, yes. You know, like, I'm like, that's not an act. He's like really being himself. You know? Oh yeah. No, D Diego, he's awesome. Um, now have you interviewed a uh, BJ Penn? I have. What was At he like? Tim Ruka, just super nice. Very laid back. Oh, so you must, you're, you're, uh, collabing, collaborating with Ruka? No, no, I, I wasn't, but I interviewed him at Ruka. At because, Ruka in um, Orange County, huh? Yes, shout out to Jason Carlo And Pat, Pat, too. And who, yes, Pat. Yeah, Pat, yeah. Yes, but um, because I have a good relationship with Jason Perillo, mm -hmm. and a few years ago, then, you know, I was able to interview BJ Penn. Yeah, but legend. Beautiful gym. You know, it's like very white and clean. Yeah, I've been there. I've been there. There's like an octagon in there. And um, yeah, I, I had a tour of that place as well. Yeah, it, it's yeah, really back. cool. Really cool facility. Yeah. Um, so um, as far as like your future, where do you see? I mean, how has, first of all, I mean, first of all, how has COVID like kind of um, changed this, the, the whole scene of reporting and, and what you do for a living? That's a great question because I was working at the radio station, like I mentioned, full time. My show was on NBC Sports uh, Radio. And I think COVID in many ways uh, sped up the inevitable, right? Because now I think, especially in 2020, we're in the more digital era, right? Oh. Where doing stuff, even like you, like I've seen your stuff on your YouTube. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. You, you like it? Of course, that's where it's like, oh, he, he wants to do an interview? Oh, hell yeah. I, I'm, I'm winging it every week, I'm winging it. Well, you do a great job winging it. But I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm still trying. Yeah, well, keep up the good work. Thank you, uh, thank you, Helen. I really appreciate that, Helen. Thank you. Yeah, but you know how, like I mentioned, with YouTube, um, and when I worked at the radio station, I could tell radio was almost... You know, it's like, let's be real, right? Who really reads the newspaper or like gets a newspaper sent to their door? Um, the same way in Canadian anymore. This is, we're in the digital. They just go yeah. on the internet now. Yeah. So during this COVID era, uh, my boyfriend and I, 
he goes by the schmo. Uh, we started a podcast. Can we can we uh, shout him out? Can we can we promote it real quick? Yeah, the Schmo Zone podcast. Hi, spell it out for the viewers and listeners. I want to I want them to get it. Okay, T H E space S C H M O Z O N E. The Schmo Zone. What what? How did you come up with that? Well, um, he goes by the schmo, and he wears, like, big yellow glasses, which I, ha I have to say, because I saw your brother Bobby wear yellow glasses, and I was like, what? Like, my boyfriend wears yellow glasses, too, and he's been wearing them since he was born. Like, I've That's seen crazy. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah. So, oh, tell so you, you know about my brother and uh, his podcast as well? Oh, yeah. You know what's crazier about your brother and his podcast? Kalila was a swimmer, too, just to let you know. She was on my team. What? Sam Pipers. Yeah, dude, tell her what the fuck. Whoa, I'm going a, I'm to a text her. Yeah, seriously. Like, you were on Kalila's swim team? Yes. Like, and am you I know Kawinda, too? Her friends. You know uh, Kawinda? Yes. You know her you know sister. sisters? <laughs> yeah. Oh, so we're basically family. Yeah. Oh, that's what's up. I, that's I, crazy. Small world, right? I'm yeah. going to let her know that tonight. Wow. I, I know. Yeah. So my name's Helen. My sister's name is Michelle. Michelle Yi, Helen Yi. Yi sisters, Coon sisters. We were both on Sandpipers. So the Yi sisters and the Coon sisters were on the same team. Yes. And wow. yeah, I remember the coach she swam with, uh, Ron, and then, and her sister, I think, well, I was like super, super young. So I think the sister, like I saw more of Kalila. Yeah. And I remember thinking when she first joined Sandpapers, like, holy crap, she's freaking fast. Dude, they were about it. They, they were, I think they were, I mean, they're, they had, they were real, they're good swimmers, huh? Oh, but I, I seen with my two eyes, you know, they're, they were freaking good. I think they were just trained because, you know, their mom was like really about their, them like advancing in their skills and stuff as a, at a young age. I, I mean, correct yeah. me if I'm wrong, though, like their mom was an integral part of uh, their development. Yes. And right? again, like she and her sister, I actually I looked up to her swimming like she was really, really fast. Yeah, yeah. I you know what? I'm so pretty. glad you, you just solidified it because I've, I've heard stories, but then hearing it from you i'm like oh wow they're on the same team that's great i mean yeah, what are the odds same time how weird right so we are related it's like that's two so crazy yeah up on tiger belly and get a little reunion going a little swim team I, I, I would love to catch up with her i'm gonna holler at her tonight uh what's the name of the uh alma mater of the high school her high school or like your the team you're on oh, like sandpipers Sandpapers? Sand yeah, it's it's a bird, I think. Okay, right? so shout out to the sandpapers. Yeah, sandpapers. That's crazy. That's paper, yeah. Wow, you just blew my mind. I had no I idea. Oh, well, you know, it was in the back of my mind. I was going to bring it up at the beginning, but I'm like, uh, she, she might know, she might not know, but that's crazy because you guys you are on the same team. Yeah, the swim community is very small, and because I'm sure you guys know she was in Vegas, you know, for a few years. Yeah. Yeah, that's when she was on Sandpapers. Were you guys friends? Yeah, she was friends with my sister, Michelle. I'm going to write that down, Michelle and yeah. Helen. Michelle with two L's and Helen with one. That's so crazy. I'm going I'm to I'm hit her up tonight. That's crazy. <laughs> so, that is so, what a small world. I know. Uh, I hope she's good. Oh, yeah. You know what? I knew she was good because we've taken trips together. Like, we went to um, Mexico and then, like, her and her sister could really dive, like, they were, like, really going deep in the water, and I'm like, oh, was, me and my girl were just, like, barely, like, just waving barely around, yeah. wailing around, but they were, like, going way deep in the water, and, like, their form was, like, just perfect. Yeah, no, they're, they're great, so, but I'm, I'm saying, I hope she's doing good. Oh, yeah, they're doing good, yeah, their podcast the is killing it. The world, right? Oh, no, they're doing good, they're doing good, yeah, no, they're doing well, Incredible. yeah. Um, I want to go back to, okay, so how often, when, are, when do you guys post your podcast and where can people like check that? Is that on YouTube? 
Yeah, so um, it's on the Schmoes YouTube. Uh, you know, S C H M O, the T H E. Yeah. So yeah. it's on the Schmoes YouTube. That's where the podcast every Tuesday a new episode drops. So today uh, a new episode drops with number thirteen ranked bantamweight Marab, who trains. Oh. With so you're interviewing spiders. Huh? You're interviewing fighters? Yes. So we've had from like Dana White to Paulo Costa, like every week to your eye favor. Um, just, yeah, it's like so far, yeah, mainly MMA fighters and boxers. Yeah. You got to get Justin Gaethje. I know. We got to get him in studio because a lot of people, that guy, that guy's a beast. Yeah. Yeah. We've uh, interviewed them like so my boyfriend has his channel you know and he does like uh interviews he's a sports personality yeah. and then my channel so we both in my channel is helling sports yeah so, um, we both do our separate interviews and then separate. we come together as a team yeah. every tuesday um and do our podcast um just out of my just out of my uh just out of curiosity who do you think would win that fight? When that when Khabib and uh, Gaethje fight, who who's who's gonna win that? You know what? I, you're gonna hate me for saying a very politically correct answer, but may the best man win. That's your answer. Yeah, I mean that that's all I, I'm gonna say. You know, with it recorded, just because you know I've I have thought respect for both of them. I've thought a lot about the strategies and the styles of both fighters. Mm -hmm. I think that if Gaethje can stop Khabib's takedown. Yes. Because I, I personally think Gaethje's better on his feet. I know, I know Khabib yeah. on yeah. with that, um, that shovel, that shovel uppercut, whatever, or whatever that, 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 that punch he hit him with. But Gaethje is a beast in my opinion. Yes, very exciting fighter to watch and, and super nice as well. Yeah, and, and not only that, he actually wrestled. He was an all-American division one wrestler. wrestler. I know, and I think that's where a lot of people fail to remember that. Got to do their. They gotta. They gotta look at that. That's that's yeah. that's more. In my opinion, that's more than half the skill set. Because if yeah. they can take you down, you can't hit it, you know what I mean? And they have a good jiu-jitsu game, you know? Yeah. So I, I'm very, you know, obviously excited to see how that fight plays out. Yeah. And, yeah, I'm very curious to see how it plays out because of the stylistic matchup. I have to be honest with you. I, I'm a fan of Khabib. I am. But with this scenario... Since I wrestled in high school and I kind of, you know, in the, you know, the collegiate high school system, I have to root for Gaethje on this one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so I, 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 I'm wishing it's going to be a great fight, no matter how you look at it. Yeah. But I believe that because Khabib, but this is the thing, Khabib's wrestling is so unorthodox because, you know, that, that Russian ensemble, that, that whole yeah. style is different than division one. Amer you know, high school, uh, you know, division one wrestling. It's a different thing, you know? Yeah. Well, it's more like Greco Roman and it like Khabib's is more like Greco Roman because it's like upper body locks and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And Gaethje is your just conventional, regular collegiate one, high school wrestling, double legs, high crotches, singles, and stuff like that. Exactly. Well, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, 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 no, just, I'm a fan. That's no, all. I, I know. And I love it. And again, I mean, I, I wish I could say more, but it's because, you know, I interview both no, of no, them. No, I totally understand. Yeah, I totally understand. So I, I don't want. Yeah, no, you're just the, like, yeah, you're, you're just. Them you're to like. Say one or the other. Yeah. 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 So, um, <laughs> but the, uh, on the same card, right? Tony Ferguson, Dustin Poirier. Mm -hmm. How upset were you though that Tony and Habib? I wanted that fight so bad. <laughs> we all did. I mean, I was upset that that never went down because that was like they're both, you know what I'm saying? That should have happened. I know. Yeah. Is that ever going to happen? I mean, because, well, Tony just got beat up. I mean. He's fighting Poirier. Dustin? Yeah. That's going to be interesting because they've, they're all, they've both kind of been, they're not newbies. They've been around. Oh, yeah. 
And I mean, I think Dustin, obviously a great fighter, great striker. Yeah. You know what? I don't know. I, I you know, I kind of want, I, I've never really been a Dustin fan. I've, I've been a Tony fan. Yeah, Tony. I, I'm rooting for Ferguson on that one. I, I don't know. Ferguson. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great fight. So. Okay, so man, this flew by because we're already kind of pat, you know, because I keep my zooms at like 45, 50 minutes and we're already at the 45 mark. Oh, okay. Did that just fly by or what? Yeah. yeah at it, this point, I wanted to um, promote everything you got going on, your social, your website, uh, your, uh, your um, eyes on the game, where, you know, that the whole thing. So go ahead. Yeah, so you can follow me on my social media and my YouTube channel. Um, it's Helen Yi with two E's, sports. And so that's my YouTube and my website, HelenYeeSports.com. Mm -hmm. You can follow my podcast that I do with my boyfriend um, at the Schmo Zone. So Spell it out again. T H E S C H M O. Z O N E. And if you like sports comedy, you can follow my boyfriend as well at the yeah, yeah. Give him a shout out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Shout out to the Schmo who uh, has the same glasses as Bobby. Tell him yeah, too. That's crazy. That I wonder where, where he got his glasses. Oh, I don't know. My brother gets a bunch of, he buys shit all, yeah, yeah. He, 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 he shops. I don't know. I, half the time, I mean, he's got so many shoes. I don't even know where he gets his shoes from. Oh, got it. Yeah. 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 My boyfriend. I don't know. And maybe in the future, do you think your, uh, your boyfriend would hop on this to? Oh, I, I'm sure he could. I'm Let sure. Him know. Let him know. Let him know. I was asking for him. Yeah. I'll, I'll pull a few strings. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Just, just, just have a little chat with him. I, I will. Oh, just for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So what do you have a website at all? Or yeah, HelenYeeSports.com. And then where they could buy a t shirt or something? On no, it? that's uh, on the Schmo Zone. Okay, so but you do have a t shirt available? Uh, a t shirt of me? Or just whatever, any kind of merch you got. Yeah, so that's on the schmozone.com. So everything we just started merch, so um, get yours now. You can buy, you know, the Schmo Zone t-shirts. There's the Schmo mask of face shields because we all know better to be safe than sorry, right? Gotta follow the rules. Yes, ma'am. Uh, and then there will be more, you know, designs and stuff coming out soon. Awesome. So get your shirt today. Okay. Yes. You should have had it yesterday. No doubt. No doubt. I, and I appreciate your time for, um, doing the podcast as well of course i had fun Kyla, i'm gonna let her know like i'm like dude yeah, tell Kyla, seriously, your homie seriously it's i haven't seen her in what like 12 years i feel oh y'all need to get together i know i mean she Maybe made like a swim party or something do some laps yeah a swim party you're right yeah yeah and aren't you guys in california yeah yeah, I'm there, like, all the time. Oh, you, you got to hop on Tiger Belly as well. Like, she'll definitely want you on. Yeah, that would be because fun. Because there's that connection, you know what I mean? I know. It's crazy. Same but thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for doing the Stevie Weeby show first. Well, thank you, Stevie Weeby, for having me. You do a great job. And thank I you. the setup. It's uh, in your room. Yeah, I live in a little studio. Little yeah. part, yeah. One room. Awesome. Very organized. I'll, as long as I'm, I eat nice. I, I, I just as long as I'm surviving. Hey, that's what matters, right? Yeah. It's staying positive. Be so grateful thank for you. Uh, the roof over your head. That's all. Yes. Thank you so much, Helen. Um, the best of luck to you in um your future um, podcast and reporting. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Peace. Okay. Okay. So that was the Helen Yi episode. I wanted to, before I let y'all go, I wanted to, to give a couple uh, shout outs, especially to the newest patrons. Uh, um, the newest patrons this week are Brian, Joe Tresnick, Alex, Amig, 7O, Ross F, and the newest one today, Lisa Trejo. Thank you. If you want to um, support the platform and, and keep this going, go to 
patreon.com slash Stevie Weeby. I have a website, stevieweebyshow.com. Pick up a shirt today. Just to let y'all know, the shipping might be a little delayed because of the pandemic and all. Um, uh, my music's at stevieweebybandcamp.com. Um, we're still working on the music video, The Pot in Which We Travel. We're working on post-production on that. Um, I have a P.O. Box, too. Uh, if, uh, I do a, a series called Stevie's P.O. Box. If you want to send letters or packages, send up all of your stuff to 1425 North Cherokee Avenue, PO Box 1391, LA, California 90093. There is no Little Ray's World. We're taking a little break from it because um, I'm starting to get my mind on other music. I appreciate y'all. Thanks for tuning in. Peace. <laughs>